Um, now we are going to talk about the I part, realize, R-E-A-L-I-Z-E. I -E. is about individuals and teams. Um, what are the teams that you'll need, the competencies you'll need to be able to implement the strategy? It's a lot of people get started on what to implement, but they may not pay attention to what kind of skills and competencies required. And if they don't pay attention to it, then obviously you will not be able to execute it. So how do you know what are the competencies that you need? Um, in this particular part of the plan, we have a technique called the Make Collaborate Buy. Um, this is coming out of a third gen R&D book, uh, written by Arthur Belittle, and in there on chapter six is a methodology called Make Collaborate Buy. And, and that will allow you to ask the questions. Um, in order for us to have a successful uh, implementation strategy, we will need to know how to do something. We will need to know how to do. Know how to do is what our definition of competency is. So what do you need to know? What do you need to know how to? And what do you need to know how to do? And, 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 and based on that. So let's say if you were planning to go into your Pepsi or Coke and you're going to healthy beverages. And in order to make healthy beverages, you'll need to know how to do what? You'll need to know how to do beverages which taste good. You'll need to know how to find ingredients which can provide some uh, positive nutritional value. You'll need to know how to communicate that. You'll need to know how to package it. You'll need to know how to distribute it in many different channels. And as you make this list of things that we need to know how to do across the value chain, then you can ask, what is our current capability level, base? Uh, are, we, are we like a world leader, or are we uh, really weak on a particular capability? And we also ask that if we, if we had that capability, would that give us a competitive advantage? Uh, whether it's a base thing, a commodity, or if we had it and we, did, uh, and we were world class in that, we would certainly outgrow our competitors. This matrix will allow you to make some choices, whether you should now collaborate with somebody, or make it yourself or you should buy it. And this is a very powerful tool, one of the most powerful tools that I have actually used. Um, and, uh, and what it does for you is it creates a competency plan for the implementation plan. What competencies will we need? And what's our plan for acquiring these competencies to make sure the implementation will go successful? Um, what, what I'll expect from you to be able to do as a result of this, this problem, it doesn't matter what new thing you are expected to do, you should be able to forecast who your partners are going to be and, and who, who, are, who are you going to buy things from as vendors and what are you going to do in-house for yourself. Right? Thank you very much. Just continuing on the conversation about teams and, and individuals, um, the other part of individuals and teams is how will you structure the project? How will you make sure you have the right people on the team in terms of uh, making sure things are executed. And then once your teams are formed to be able to execute an implementation, you have to recognize and that all teams when they first come together as a group of individuals. And over time, they move into, into through four stages. First one will be basically storming, and they'll be fighting with each other, trying to understand what their roles are going to be. Over time, they begin to form into teams with division of labor occurring out of that. Then eventually, start, they start norming and, and normalizing into what, what they have to do. And ultimately, in the, in, the, in the performance, in the high performance. What we need to help you assess as, as, is recognize that you cannot avoid the four stages. You can't expect the team to come together to become high performing on day one. What you can do, however, is compress the time as they move from storming, performing, to norming, to performing, because you can you put some things in place. And how do you compress the time towards becoming high performing? The key message, you cannot avoid the stages. The stages have to go through and you will go through them. What all you can do is try and compress the time through, through certain types of exercises to, to, to make your team more effective on day one. And you guys already had some experience with that with uh, John Carrick's class of Outward Bound where you talk about team and team form. Okay. Um, in order to get high performing teams, first you need to somehow get alignment and agreement on the goals. And how do you get agreement on the goals? And what we find is we can create some sort of create tension on that. The goal which is exciting and compelling, a uh, stretch target which everybody understands, it will allow you to feel good, they're going to make some big really impact through your activity. That creative tension will align everybody to that particular goal. 
Uh, not so different from John F. Kennedy's speech, where he said, I would put a man on the moon. By the end of the decade, he completely organized everybody at NASA what they had to do. Not so different from Tata's speech, the written Tata's speech, in terms of um, getting uh, a $2,500 car by 2007, I believe, and, and, and to say, we need that. Very clear number and clear time to line to do it. Very exciting as a stretch target. But certainly, organize everybody. And not so different from those guys, the one laptop for child, where they basically said, we're going to get one laptop for every kid. Very ambitious goal. But we're going to actually make a $100 laptop. Not a very clear target of what the laptop price is going to be, and therefore we're going to drive what is typically a thousand dollar laptop to a hundred dollars. This is what we mean by the, the, the stretched creative tension. So it's a target which is beyond what you can do today. It will require a lot of change, but you get people organized. How do you do that within your team? How do you give them a stretch target that they are all going to feel excited about? Um, there are also some other techniques that you can put in there from, from techniques provided by like the David Cantor, the four player system, where in, within your meetings you'll see people sitting there and they'll be basically bystanding or they're making strong moves or follow or opposing. And what we are trying to say over here is you want teams. You are not all going to be seeing, saying just boss. You want teams that are going to disagree with you over the leadership. You want teams that are going to basically find a certain solution between two people are opposing each other. Um, you need to find people that if something is good, that they'll follow. How do you make that, uh, you know, high performance teams which, which are going to balance of movers, proposers, followers, and bystanders? And how do you as an individual wear the hat of all four of the stances? At some point, you do need to make a move. On the other side, you might need to follow somebody else, or sometimes you might want to disagree. So you can't always be opposing. You can't always be following. You need to be able to find other states to choose from. And that's essentially how we'll help you try and form teams for of the competencies that you need to be successful. These teams are going to be important and how you manage them, how you align them, how you excite them is critical for implementation. Thank you.